Hello, folks. Welcome in. We'll get started in just a moment with Shelby here. Get comfortable. And we will hear from Shelby about the gems from our archives in just a moment. Welcome back. If you've been here before, welcome for the first time. This is your first San Diego 101 with us. Thanks so much for joining today. As you get settled, just a couple reminders here. We are happy to take your questions, as many as we have time for at the end. Um, so please do use our Q&A function so we don't lose your questions in the chat. If you have something to share, um, a connection to make, or want to say hello, please use the chat. But if you've got a question, please use that Q&A function so that we can get to them at the end if we have time. All right, looks like we're stabilizing with our numbers here. So we will, <laughs> hello from the chat, I just saw that. Um, it looks like we're stabilizing. So we'll head um, right into our talk with Shelby. She will be sharing um, gems from the archives reflecting the rich history of Black San Diego. Um, Shelby, oh, sharing screen, awesome. And I will stop my video and take it away. All right, I'm so glad to have everybody here today on this glorious day. You could be out enjoying the beautiful San Diego. Um, you are here with me. I'm also very, very glad to be able to share this presentation with you. Um, for those of you who do not know me or know of me, I am Shelby Gordon. I am the marketing manager. I'm coming up on two years in that role. I am a San Diego native, born and I'm very proud of that. A graduate of um, Mount Miguel High School and have built my professional career around a lot, uh, a lot around Diego and the quality of life. So I've worked at SeaWorld, the San Diego Housing Commission, United Way, the Del Mar Fair Rock Center, and I'm really glad to have landed at this time, a uh, really vital time in San Diego's history. So um, I want, uh, particularly for those of you who um, have not been to a San Diego 101 and may not know a lot about the San Diego History Center, I'm just going to quick who we are and what we do and how we do it the way we do it. And then I'm going to share the gems. All right. So the San Diego History Center, we're over 90 years old, and we tell the diverse stories of our region. And I that we are not the History Center or the Historical Society for the city of San Diego. We are the History Center and the Historical Society for the San Diego region. So I think of that as Oceanside through to Borrego Springs, from Fallbrook through the center of the city down into South County and into Tijuana. So really the story of our region, past, present and future. We work to really educate and enrich our community by um, adding value, by elevating stories and highlighting leaders and um, uh, trailblazers. We really work to preserve our history as you're gonna see a lot um, today. And all of this really comes together to foster a great sense of civic pride. We welcome visitors at two facilities. One um, in beautiful Balboa Park, the jewel of the city. And we also um, welcome visitors at the Hanipero Serra Museum in Presidio Park. And for those of you um, who are reading the San Diego Union today, there's a story running. The Hanipero Serra Museum is um, completing renovation this month on the east side in the north tower 
And um, we will be reopening to the public on Saturday, February 26th. So we hope that you will be able to join us in interactive exhibits that are inside that museum. Yeah. So we learned, um, I started three weeks before our first lockdown for the pandemic. And we immediately became a resource um, bombarded um, by press wanting to know um, how San Diego reacted to the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. And we had a lot of photos, as you see here um, in, in our collections. However, we had no personal accounts, no personal stories of the in that particular pandemic on our. We immediately were able to launch, we call it happening now, because we realized really quickly that uh, folks, we need to document what was happening now because history is happening now. So this is um, a, a never ending, it's a perpetual initiative and we are collecting the stories of fellow San Diegans. We put many of them up on the site. We've received um, poems and artwork. We've received diaries. We've received um, accounts of folks through the pandemic experience. So that is from testing to vaccination to boosting. So we encourage you, you can go to, um, historyhappeningnow.org and share your story. Realized really quickly um, that our focus needed to change. Before the pandemic, we were all about welcoming people to our four walls, um, residents and tourists. We were about partnering with um, educators and families to share um, the history of the region and also share Shelby, I don't know if you can hear me. We're having uh, some trouble with your sound. Oh. Are you, um, is your, I don't know if it's your internet or I hope it's not mine. Um, but we've had a couple of folks mention in the comments and in the questions that they're having some difficulty hearing you the whole time. It's cutting in and out a little. Okay, let me, hold on just a minute. Internet. Sam, did you hear that? I, I heard my name and that's it. I'm sorry, what? I'm going to internet and see if we, in it and see if we can get this resolved. Hold on. Okay. All right. While she's getting sorted out, I'm going to drop a few links into our chat so you can check out our um, other offerings here. Um, we've got a lot of different ways to engage with you. So we'd love to have you come and visit our locations, as Shelby mentioned. Um, San Diego History Center is open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 11 to 4 in Balboa Park always a great visit. Um, and our Junipero Serra Museum location, you saw those wonderful photos of what's going on up there. We're gonna be reopening at the end of this month. So you can come and see us up there in beautiful, uh, in that beautiful building, as well as join us for a tour. So we're gonna start having tours again up at the Serra Museum. And our first one will be on the 27th. That's first Sunday that we're open. So please do check us out. And I'm dropping in a few links in our chat right now so you can look at what we've got going on. Our events page is a great place to start for these kinds of programs as well as other ongoing um, things that we are doing. You can always check out our collections and research. Shelby's going to be talking a bit about that today. Um, and if you were with us last month, you heard Tina uh, talking about our collections and all the wonderful things you can access online um, at our website there. You can also uh, check out our um, education programming and any questions you have about that, uh, volunteering and education. Um, and we, oh, I don't think she's back yet, um, but I will mention, thank you for the comment about um, maybe Shelby might try without video um, so she can still have her, her presentation going. So thank you for that comment. We'll mention that to her when she pops back in. All right, so I am going to, oh yeah, we're having some buffering issues. It just must be, 
I was going to say it's a Monday, but it's definitely Tuesday. So that's not the issue. Um, but we've got a wealth of um, ways to interact with you, as I mentioned. I'm also going to put in our chat the link to our next um, SD 101. Um, we're going to be speaking with, or we're going to be hearing from rather, Dr. Susan Hector, and she's going to be talking about California women of Old Town. So I'm putting that into the chat as well. Um, a lot of you folks are repeat visitors and I appreciate that so much. Um, San Diego 101s are one of our ways of getting into the topics of San Diego history or related to our organization that maybe aren't on the walls or we maybe haven't talked about before. So they're a great way to get into the nitty gritty and, and personal stories of our organization and of our history here in San Diego. Um, I've got a question in the chat that I'll go ahead and answer right now about the archives or the research library, the archives in our Balboa Park location. Um, we do have some public um, community access days. We, our next one will be in April. So um, I'm gonna share that link as well. If you're interested in coming into our community access day in April, you can sign up for that and I'll put that in our chat right now. Um, otherwise, there is remote research available and all of those wealth of resources that Tina showed us last month that um, you can view that video on our YouTube channel um, to learn more about how to access all of those things from the comfort of your home. Um, but if you do wanna come in, our public access day link is in the chat right now. And Shelby, someone suggested maybe um, having your camera view turned off to reduce oh. the bandwidth there yeah but Absolutely. it looks you do sound clear to me already so that sounds <laughs> okay i'm back okay. i switched twice so All right. um All i right. did a bonus okay. one thank okay you. thank you for that heads up ah technology love it or hate it um so 2020 pre-pandemic we were welcoming residents and tourists into our two physical museums. We, um, Sam was leading the education team and partnering with educators and families, particularly um, uh, coming on site. For those of us who grew up in San Diego, we know about coming to Balboa Park for a week um, and the school and the park programs are still going on. We're facilitating a lot of on-site events at both uh, museums. And we were also working to augment uh, research requests. So we had to make an abrupt and unplanned change. So like many businesses, our literal uh, standard operating procedure shifted in, in days. So I call it our inter-pandemic focus. We were well, now welcoming visitors online. We are partnering on virtual education programs. We are hosting virtual events such as this one. We were, uh, the team was really working to digitize many hundreds and hundreds of documents and resources for a broader online access. And we were also broadening our community sourced initiatives. So we had been doing that before reaching out to the community and collecting um, information and, and photos and um, memories. The Share Your Story for the COVID um, pandemic, that initiative really sort of um, solidified the need for us to be in that space really aggressively. So we moved to a digital first strategy. So you see there, share your story. You of course are here now for San Diego 101. We do a multiple virtual events throughout the year. We even launched exhibitions that have been long planned to be on-site exhibitions. We plan them to be virtual. And of course the education team just really did a phenomenal job by putting a plethora and a wealth of content online and made that accessible for um, families and for educators. So now that our physical museums have reopened, that did not mean that we stopped working on the digital side. So I call this, we are now a dual 
path organization. We still run the physical museums, but we are still really committed and aggressive on the digital museum operations side as well. And I call this the convergence. It's a convergence of physical and digital, and I describe it as our new way of work. So what we've discovered is that history is relevant. It is changing. What really came to light for me is that history is personal. It, per, it, it has a 3D, it has dimension to it. It is critical in understanding who we are and where we're going. History belongs to everyone. And again, when I talk about the region, I'm talking about the citizens of the region, those who live, love, work, and learn in this space. Um, Dr. Tina talks about history as a contact sport because in many cases it is physical, it's strategic, it is planning, it is um, X's and O's, it's moving around, it is learning to see what others are doing. And of course, history is happening now, it's happening now. And this is what I describe as our new way of work. And we're really committed to both paths. Uh, we are still opening exhibitions on site. The newest one is Collecting San Diego, which are selections from the Dijkstra Fine Art Collections, a beautiful exhibition at our museum in Balboa Park. Of course, the Sarah Museum will be reopening to the public um, later this month after uh, a much needed renovation to bring it back to its former glory. We're very excited about that. And we have really unearthed quite a few um, beautiful um, documents and artwork and sculpture and um, things that the public should really see. So we remain committed to on-site exhibitions. We're also committed to, to virtual experiences. So the Nathan Harrison exhibition, which is currently in our museum in Balboa Park, we launched our first, um, our, our first for us vir virtual exhibition. And it sort of gives you uh, the breadth and scope of Nathan Harrison's very, very interesting life. So in case you cannot make it to the museum in Balboa Park or until you can make it to the museum in Balboa Park, you still have an opportunity to experience all of the um, work and research and commitment and storytelling and coming to life of Nathan Harrison's story. And Celebrate San Diego Black History and Heritage is also um, a virtual experience is uh, married with the community sourced experience. I'll talk about that more in a bit. We remain dedicated, I think now more than ever, now that we've lived through this pandemic, on ensuring that we are making platforms and opportunities available for San Diegans to have their history um, shared, archived, and cataloged so that years from now, generations from now, people will be able to read, listen, touch, and learn, and be inspired by people. The education programs are still going in a hybrid scenario. So we still have um, a lot of virtual learning going on, but we are also welcoming students back to the physical space. So again, it's a dual path. We um, made an abrupt shift. We learned how to do it virtually, but we could not turn our back on that. We could not drop that very, very valuable baton in our race to ensure that folks are being um, inspired by history, that they're learning from history, that they are captivated by history and that they want to know more. And of course, our virtual initiatives continue on as well. Virtual discussions go on monthly. They are across a broad range of topics. So I encourage you to sign up for our newsletter or check our website frequently. 
to ensure that you do not miss um, any of these really important discussions. And one of the key things that we took away from being physically closed was that people really were still interested in wanting uh, access to the research archives. And we were able to bring on platforms and um, launch initiatives, one that provided an opportunity for us to responsibly and technologically uh, uh, forward in a forward way, expand the reach and the impact by scanning, by documenting, by recording, by um, being um, a, a resource for other institutions that at this point want their history um, recorded in archives. We do all of that. Um, the education team, as you see with Justine on the right, literally took cameras down into the archives to ensure that the education team was still um, having access and that students still had an opportunity to learn about what was in the archives. So okay, now talking about the archives, did you know the San Diego History Center research archives have 45 million documents? documents, 2.5 million historical photographs, 1,700 oral histories, 1,500 films, 15,000 historic objects, 7,000 items of historic clothing, and 1,700 pieces of San Diego regional art. Now, we see only a fraction of this, of course, in our physical space. So with the Be Here Now exhibition, you I have an opportunity to see the San Diego regional art that's in our archives. Uh, we have documents um, in the Celebrate um, exhibition. We have objects in the Nathan Harrison exhibition. We have maps and photography in the Places of Promise exhibition in our space. Um, just very, very um, intentional about what we're able to share because as you can see, we have a lot of stuff. So there are a variety of ways that the public can access the archives. And as Sam mentioned, um, I really encourage you to go back to Tina, Dr. Tina's presentation from last month because she got into it about how um, to efficiently and effectively um, manipulate the resources that we have in order to ensure that you're capturing the information that you want to know. So I highly recommend this. I go to it at least once a week because I still have questions. So I want to stop right here. I want to take a breath. Woo! I'm going to take a sip. Okay. So we don't have any questions in the Q and A quite yet. If okay. If has any, quickly put them in, and we'll answer a couple. Okay. Perfect. But I don't see any quite yet. All right. I needed to take a breath and a sip. <laughs> so we are going to move on. Okay. I am so excited about this. Um. I'm glad that you're here for Gems of the Ar uh, Gems from the Archives. Of course, Black History Month is celebrated in February, but literally every month is about, and I did not know what to put that in that space. I didn't want to put in fill in the blank, but we really talk about all aspects of history every month at the San Diego History Center. And of course, we're San Diego centric. So you would not believe um, the conversations that we have. And it's really all about ensuring that we are capturing, cataloging, documenting, sharing, promoting, elevating and educating on what makes San Diego different and distinct. I wanna start with one of our most 
um, remarkable resources. And this is the Baynard Photography Collection. Um, photographer Norman Baynard um, operated a commercial studio for over 40 years and documented all aspects of Black life in San Diego. And I remember him. Um, uh, I, I can le at least, I can, on, on five fingers, I remember encountering him, having grown up in San Diego and have him having been at a party or at a church event or at a debutante's ball or at a family reunion or at a, a child's blessings. Uh, and his son, Arnold, in 1991, donated this remarkable collection to the San Diego History Center. And that collection consists of photography from over 13,000, that is the correct number, 13,000 photo sessions, and it is over 29,000 images. And for a photography collection to reflect Black life in a specific city that was unheard of west of the Mississippi. As you can imagine, um, Black life was being documented um, in, in other parts of the country, but in the West, particularly in for San Diego, this type of collection, the vastness of it, the, the scope of it was a remarkable gift. And you don't just have that kind of thing just sort of like dropped off at the front door. As a history museum, as um, archiving professionals, it is a process. It is a step-by-step uh, -step, um, scenario to be able to take in something like that, to understand it, to be able to um, sort it and categorize it in a way that was most beneficial to the public. And that's what the History Center took on. And they received a grant in mid 2010 from the National Endowment of the Arts, $20,000. This is just to get the project started. And you can imagine with that type um, the challenge really was there were all these images, there were all these negatives, but there were not a lot of records that matched the people with who was who were who was in the photographs. So a lot of this work needed to be done, and um, Sam's going to drop a link. There's a great article in the Journal of San Diego History about how that process. Um, was facilitated, how the History Center went ab about ensuring that they were uh, responsible stewards with this great gift. And there was actually an exhibition at the History Center in Balboa Park called Portraits of a Proud Community, Norman Baynard's Logan Heights. And it started in 2011 and ran through early 2012. And this collection lives on. Um, in the last couple of years, Elsa Sevilla did a podcast or an interview with Arnold Baynard, Norman Baynard's son, about his father, about his father's work, and about his mother, who was also very instrumental in, in Mr. Baynard's professional life and with his interaction within the community. So you can find that on our SoundCloud channel. And I encourage you, if you want some behind the scenes about um, Norman Baynard and just the wealth and scope and valuable work that he did for San Diegans, um, it's a very, very interesting listen. And again, he captured just so many aspects of life in Black San Diego. The image on the left, you see Muhammad Ali on a visit to San Diego at the local mosque. You see family portraits 
Um, this is an interesting one. Um, I got an inquiry last year for Black History Month. Uh, a journalist was looking for a photo of a Black church choir. And so unbeknownst to me, I, I went into our archives, I pulled an image and I sent it over. I happened to look at the caption and this is Bethel Baptist Church Choir. This was probably the late forties and I saw the name Joy Gordon. It's my aunt, Joy, my father's sister. So as I was um, finishing up the presentation this morning, I was having coffee downstairs with my dad and I showed him this picture. And I said, daddy, find Aunt Joy. And he, he found out Aunt Joy and he said, and Aunt Pat is behind her. And my beautiful, beautiful aunts are in this photograph. So um, this one means a lot to me, but it just, it, it shows you, as you're looking through photos, I found somebody else that I knew in a photo last night. So um, it's really worth taking the time to go online and look at the photos because it one, it brings back fabulous memories um, of, a, of a different time, um, of a different social um, structure, of a different lifestyle um, for Black San Diego. And, and, and many times those are very good memories for me. So you see engagement parties, you see family reunions, you see um, political um, events, you see documentation of Black firefighters. I mean, just really, really interesting. He captured so many um, aspects and so many moments in Black life. So um, outside the theater, and I love, you know, I think about how we go to the theater now and how these young people were dressed. Um, that always just astounds me. And the Logan Heights Lutheran Church, how proud this gentleman is. He's got his, his his beautiful car and just in his beautiful suit and look at that face, just so much pride there. It shows some partnerships. Um, we don't know the behind the scenes story on this, but for this moment in time, these folks were linking arms. They were um, telling stories with their facial expressions and with where they were. You see national events, like when the president comes, Mr. Baynard took photos of that. So I encourage you to go on to our Past Perfect online site, and Sam's going to drop that link in, and just type in Norman, Norman Baynard collection into the search bar, and you will get, you know, a plethora of images. Our other virtual resource is on collections.sandiegohistory.org. And this is really our new digital initiative um, where the scanning work and the cataloging work that is being done by our team, they're really um, populating this particular platform. And I tell you, I go on it at least once a day and I find just tons of stuff. Whoever needs anything, I'm able to go there and find it. So between those two resources, you'll really be able to find the images that you're looking for. Another gem that I wanna share with you is Welcome to the Mix. And in this particular case, these are oral histories and you are hearing the history of Black San Diego from Black San Diegans in their own words. And the, um, the, the strive for equality, the um, keeping together of families, the moments and people who have changed and shaped Black San Diego, they're reflected in these oral histories. So I encourage you as well to go um, there and they're great reads when you're walking around the lake or when you're got long rides in the car. They're great um, stories to hear and they're in their own words. Another great resource is the Journal of San Diego History. And um, if 
I am unable to find a photograph more times than not, I'm able to find um, what I'm looking for in the journal. So this is where I get a lot of history about organizations like the Urban League Guild and the NAACP, about um, San Diego State Black students, about social justice, Black Panthers, about um, things that interest um, me, I'm able to find I'm able to find it in the, in the journal. And one thing I'll mention is if you are a member of the San Diego History Center, then you will actually receive a, at, at certain levels, you will receive a printed copy of uh, the journal of San Diego History. So for those of you who have been to the center and seen the Celebrate, San Diego Black History and Heritage Exhibition. One of the, one of the um, key points in that physical exhibition is this timeline. It is about eight, nine feet wide and it starts in 1798 and it goes through 2020. It's two-sided. And one of the things that I love about this and the first gem that I'm going to share with you is on this timeline is called out in this space 19 sorry 1887 when Bethel AME was founded and it was the first organized black religious institution in San Diego Solomon Johnson and Cordelia Johnson started Bethel AME 1887 what I love about this is that the church for their 100th anniversary, their 100th church anniversary, um, donated their church program to the San Diego History Center. And that church program is on exhibit in the Celebrate space. So love that. I was down in the archives last Friday and what has happened is they've donated another program for their 125th. So I think I see Miss Joyce here and she'll never know how grateful I am to her for really um, being um, a, a front runner and working with the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority to capture leaders um, nominations to ensure that we are really talking about the scope and the 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 broad um, spectrum of personalities and sectors that San Diego Black leaders have impacted. And I, so I shout out to Ms. Joyce, but also shout out to Bethel AME to ensure that the San Diego History Center continues to collect their history. So another, um, I call this the journalistic um, gem, is uh, many of us are familiar with the Voice and Viewpoint newspaper. Um, it's been for, for decades and decades um, a, a premier Black publication weekly in San Diego. Um, but before there was a Voice and Viewpoint, there was the San Diego Lighthouse newspaper. And again, it was Black um, own and run, and it concentrated on um, happenings in the Black community. And of course, I was having coffee with Daddy this morning, and he was telling me um, stories about the lighthouse and about the cartoons that ran in the lighthouse and about how um, the community was really dependent upon the lighthouse, as we are now with the Voice and Viewpoint, mm -hmm. to get um, information about what's happening in the Black community. Another donated gem was from Jackie Thompson Dunn. She was the first Black San Diego female Olympian. Let me say it again. She was the first Black San Diego, San Diego born Olympian. So she ran in the 1972 Munich Olympics and she went on our website filled out a uh, I want to donate an artifact form, um, which was vetted by our team. 
um, one of our collection specialists went out um, who specialized in ephemera. These are um, material documents. So he went on out to her house and met with her and her family, heard her story, saw all her clips, and she donated her Olympic bib to the San Diego History Center. And again, that is in the case, the exhibition case with the Voice and Viewpoint newspaper, the Lighthouse newspaper, and Miss Jackie's bib is there. And this is another um, relatively new donation to us. And this is also featured in the Celebrate exhibition. And these um, are works of art by local artist Duke Windsor. And they are the first paintings done by a local Black artist that have ever been donated to the San Diego History Center. So they are both um, in the Celebrate exhibition. Um, the one on the left is Jewel of the City. So you may recognize the California Tower there. It's an extraordinarily beautiful painting. And I also am really captivated by the one on the right called Wired. And I, I think that that is a, a beautiful description. Um, and it gives you some things to think about, doesn't it? So again, donated gems. This is one that um, just popped up on Friday when I was down in the archives. And it really, really, it actually kept me up last night thinking about it. This was um, a document, a book compiled by um, Lorenza Taylor Pace. And it is about Black pioneers and pioneer descendants who ended up living in La Jolla. The, the documented time period is 1880 to 1974. So you see a photograph there. So you have a historian who took it upon herself to do really deep work um, on documenting specifically the lives of Black San Diegans who uh, lived and worked in La Jolla. So it includes maps, it includes descriptions and photographs. And the thing that really intrigued me was she lists the names. So you can imagine such a valuable document on a historical point in time at, that you would normally off the top of your head think, oh, let me do this. But she did it and took it a step further to ensure that it was part of a collection for San Diego overall um, and is now part of our collection. Just really interesting, interesting. Okay, now I'm a little biased, but this is my favorite piece. For those of us who grew up in the Black church, we know the Martin Luther King Church fan really well. So I got a call about this. Jeremy called me and said, Shelby, you won't believe what we got. And I was super excited. And um, the thing that I loved even more about it was on the backside um, was uh, uh, Calvary Baptist Church. Now I went to Calvary Baptist Church when Dr. Lockridge was there um, for many years. And this the, the printing and distribution of this fan was donated by Mr. and Mrs. Bean. I don't know if y'all know the Beans, but Mrs. Bean was my vacation Bible school teacher. And um, Mr. Bean passed away in the last couple of years and they were married for like 70 years, a phenomenal couple. Uh, but this is my favorite, favorite piece right now. Um, and I am just super excited to be able to share that with you. But those are the best, 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 best ones. Now, after all of this, I'm sure you want to know how can I donate? And I know Sam went through this, but I'm going to do it again. So you go to our website under research and you see there, donate an artifact. You complete the form. Our collections team vets the form. They may contact you. They may want some more information from you. The form at least gives us enough information 
for us to know um, where it may fit in our collection or where it may fit in someone else's collection. So it's important that that form is completed because that really is the start of the process. Again, we don't necessarily take things that are dropped off at our door. We really, in order for it to um, really make it into a, a discussion about whether it fits in our collection or not, we really need to go through these processes. So how can you access um, the images that I shared, um, there's um, information about the historic clothing, about the historic documents, there are maps online. You really can start, um, again, um, on the research services page on our website. And again, I really encourage you to go back to Tina's um, presentation from last month because she really got into the weeds and offered tips and tools that I had never heard of, but that I am now using every day. So I really encourage you to do that. You can go to, um, to our photo store here and look, you can go to our virtual um, resource platform, which has all of the new digitized collections and just a really valuable resources. And how can you access the research archives? We have on-site research services. And if you're a member, you get a discount on that. And then we have the next community research access day is coming up in April. And again, um, because these days require so much behind the scenes work, from our team in order to pull what you need or um, do investigation to see if we actually have what you need in a format that you can access. Um, we really encourage you to take advantage of these, these two great resources for you. So Sam is gonna drop the link in for you to be able to fill out the form. Now, you all are getting a special tip because the form is not even on the website yet for April 23rd. And there is space, space is very limited for community research access days. So I encourage you, if you've got something that you want to submit for possible research, please do that sooner than later. Now, if you also want to donate um, as far as community source, what's going into the exhibitions, you can do this in a couple of ways for the Celebrate San Diego Black History and Heritage exhibition. Um, you saw the, the big timeline where I mentioned where Bethel AME appeared. We know that there are elements in our timeline of Black San Diego history that are missing elements. And so you have an opportunity, the community has an opportunity to submit items for what our timeline is missing. So we encourage you to do that. You can also nominate a local hero and these folks will go certainly onto the virtual space and in some cases into the physical space. So we have, again, um, just a broad scope of leaders. So Dr. Rodney Hood, um, of course, is a medical leader. Um, Claire Carter is a trailblazer in the hospitality sector. Um, Cecil Lytle um, is a virtuoso pianist and a professor emeritus at UCSD. So again, we've got finance, we've got the military, we've got sports, we've got law, we've got Bishop McKinney, we've got Leon Williams. So the thing that I wanna say about leaders is we know some of these names, but we wanna ensure that it, this person may not be a, a, a household name, but they've been a leader, they've impacted, they've inspired, they have, um, mentored, and we want to ensure that they are acknowledged and included in our collection. Of course, too, then you can submit your story on Share Your Story. Again, we've gotten music, we've gotten oral histories, we've gotten diaries, we've gotten artwork, and this is a great platform for you to be able to share your story. Um, and again, that will go into our archives. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. One, because I don't know what, look at my time, look at there. Yay, okay. 
All right, um, Sam. All right, so we've gotten some amazing interactions in the chat space. So many people making fantastic uh, connections to your presentation, Shelby. Lots of really great excitement and memories are being sparked, just like you were talking about. Um, we've got a couple of questions have come through um, about some specific things. So I've, I've sent out some answers there. We do have a question um, in the Q&A at the moment asking about the Lighthouse newspaper. Um, and Shelby, I'm not sure if you or I can answer this, but they're asking about the availability for accessing it or the level of indexing um, because they want to know more about the Black community along Market Street and Harlem of the West and the connections to the Asian community. Ah, got it. Um, I literally, Michael, um, Katie pulled out a manila folder, opened it up, and there were the lighthouses. I, uh, She would know indexing and she would know whether there would be um, uh, a meta, metadata behind that um, in order to um, be able to give you the information that you're, that you're seeking. Um, again, I think that that may be, um, uh, if you wanted to go the um, on-site re research uh, option, you could do that. The other thing is you could um, submit for our community research day and actually come in and um, they will they will have done some background work and know um, specifically one if we've got what you're looking for and be able to pull it for you. Dr. Tina popped in. Uh, thanks. Dr. For Tina me. popped in. Yay. <laughs> She says, for the newspapers, it would be on site. So you can check Past Perfect online for what years we have. Um, it's likely a limited run. So um, up in our links, we've dropped in our Past Perfect online access link there. And as I mentioned in the chat, we'll send these out in the follow-up email too. So if you miss them in the chat, don't worry, you will get these links again. But um, Dr. Sheena says that is the best way to start. Um, we also have our collections at sandiegohistory.org email address for those collections questions um, and wondering about gen um, access and specific things, um, you can email too. But go ahead and check it out online yourself and see what we've got. Um, and as Shelby said, those access days, community access days are a great opportunity to actually come on site and check it out. I that hope that this presentation was helpful for you all that you either heard something or saw something that sparked a memory, a good memory for you, that you now have some resources on how you can donate and contribute and ensure that your history, your stories, your memories, your uh, folks that have inspired and led you, um, that you know how you can ensure that they are part of our collection as well. It's been a great joy to share with you today, uh, even my personal memories about my two aunties today. And um, we look forward to seeing you next month. Sam's going to tell you about the topic and she's going to include the link. Yes, I will. Thank you so much, Shelby. This is fantastic. Um, I think a lot of people really got some great memories sparked and, and good interest um, in all the wonderful things we have accessible to them. So in combination with Tina's tutorial last month about how to get to them and all these great links, I, I think people are going to really be able to research um, to their heart's content here. Um, next month, we've got California Women um, of Old Town San Diego with Dr. Susan Hector. I'm going to pop that link in again. Um, I shared it a little earlier, but you'll see it in the chat there. Um, thank you so, so much to everybody who joined us today, um, whether for the first time or as a repeat attendee. We appreciate you all so much. And um, as Shelby mentioned, there's a lot of discounts here and there for members. So if you're interested in becoming a member, um, definitely check out the link for that and um, put that membership to good use with our archives. Um, and there's still some more memories coming in on the chat. So um, Shelby, if <laughs> you want to respond or, or make some connections. Oh, absolutely. Um, the other thing that I will say is that um, this presentation will be on up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So if you want to share it, um, per, I'm always interested in folks who used to live in San Diego, who don't live in San Diego any longer, but are wanting to um, get a taste of San Diego. These are great presentations to share with them. 
Um, they cover such a broad um, range of topics um, with really, really good, deep information. So um, look out for that on YouTube. And again, so much of this is online. I, I am always a little afraid, am I going to have enough? And I really had to cut down um, because there's just so many rich, rich resources. So I'm so glad to see you all here. I see you, Miss Joyce. God bless you. All right, folks, we're going to end it there. If you have anything you think of that you want to ask or um, you think of something for Shelby later on, uh, please do send an email um, to education at San Diego history org to Shelby or, or to anybody else. We'll direct it to the right person. And uh, please do make use of those links and we'll hope to see you next time. Goodbye.